an interesting case. Uh, just a two-day-old neonate uh, present with central and peripheral cyanosis. However, surprisingly, there are no signs of respiratory distress. I wish this was a video, but again, I think uh, even in this picture, you can make out that this is a very calm looking child, right? No signs of distress, very comfortably sleeping. The saturation was just hovering around 86 to 90 percent on the room here. If you can appreciate uh, uh, on this monitor, the saturation was just 89 percent. So it was just fluctuating between 85 to 90 percent. So a relatively calm child. No evidence of respiratory distress, but definitely the child looked dusky. The lips are cyanose, the nose tip is cyanose. The child have a dus has a dusky appearance. So, Dr. Vikram, two kinds of answers are coming. One is congenital cyanotic heart disease, and other answer says abnormal hemoglobin, and it has already been pointed, also pointed out, probably uh, a meth hemoglobinemia. So mainly we have to differentiate between uh, a cardiac lesion and meth hemoglobinemia ductus dependent see there will be some clinical manifestation obstructive lesion there will be some clinical manifestation the child will not be uh, very calm and cool the, there will be some uh, definitely problem the child may refuse to feed or some other non specific features the child may have signs of failure the child may have evil pulses or all these features are there in a cyanotic heart disease. Uh, Dr. Vikram, uh, how do you differentiate between a heart disease and meth hemoglobinemia? Right. Clinically and then investigation will take later. Right, right. So, uh, what can be the cause of cyanosis without respiratory distress? So, a child may appear dusky, may not be actual cyanosis is there, but a polycythemic child. A polycythemic child may appear dusky to you. Then abnormal hemoglobin, some people all already commented, carboxyhemoglobin or meth hemoglobin, they will appear cyanotic or dusky to you. Then cyanotic heart disease like TOF, which when, when they are not in spell, but having a mild degree of cyanosis, they on clinical examination, they will appear dusky to you. So cyanotic heart disease, if they are not in failure, they, they there may be a little bit of uh, baseline cyanosis in this, this patient. So uh, TOF is a very good example. TOF, the severity depends upon the degree of pulmonary stenosis. You know, there is a variety called pink TOF also. So if there is not much amount of pulmonary stenosis, the patients can appear right pink. Right. So uh, so these these are the things you have to keep in mind. But severe cyanotic heart disease, you will feel that these patients are usually in respiratory distress. Uh, they, are, they are acidotic and they, they are usually appear more cyanotic than this. The saturation is usually on, on the very lower side. Well, Purnima has suggested that now you should do an ABG to differentiate between CHD and methemoglobin. So is she right? Yes, absolutely right. So whenever whenever you, uh, the saturation is not uh, batching with your patient's condition, then ABG is your answer, right? So saturation has its own limitation. So we did an ABG of this patient and you look uh, the ABG. So the PCO2 is on the slightly lower side. pH is maintained. Look at the PO2 of this patient. 84.9 millimeter of mercury, absolutely normal. So it is not, he's not hypoxic at all. Then why cyanosis? And he's on, he's not, he's on room here, 21 percent FiO2. Is there any role of hyperoxia test? Somebody has pointed out and he says hyperoxemic test. Any role? Yes, hyperoxia test is usually ruled to uh, done to rule out cyanotic heart disease. So what is done in hyperoxia test is that you give patient 100% oxygen for around 10 to 15 minutes and then you repeat uh, their ABG and you look for the PO2. So if the PO2 is more than 250 millimeter of mercury, then it virtually rule out your cyanotic heart disease. It doesn't give you any much information rather than this. It cannot prove any cyanotic heart disease. It cannot rule out your lung diseases, but a higher PO2 with administration of 100% FiO2, you can rule out your cyanotic heart disease. That is the only information you can get from hyperoxia test. So it, that is, this test has to be used very carefully and it has to be interpreted very carefully. So I think students, you can see that there is a gross disparity between the SpO2 and PO2. And this disparity is what uh, gives you a reason that uh, it may be something other than the cardiac lesion and the child is not having any respiratory problem so unlikely to be a respiratory cause and so uh, meth hemoglobinemia uh, remains co-oximetry is more reliable harita has pointed out what is the role of co-oximeter 
Absolutely right. So, uh, see, SpO2 is now a household thing, but SpO2 has its own limitation. You, you see, an SpO2 probe, you can easily attach to your finger, but what is uh, this probe is calculating? So, this probe is basically relying on. It is using two kind of radiations, infrared radiations and red radiations, right? So, red and infrared two sort of uh, lights which are absorbed uh, by your oxyhemoglobin and deoxyhemoglobin. So the machine calculates the percentage between the two kinds of hemoglobin and gives you a value. So when we say a patient is having 99% saturation, it means that he's having 1% of deoxy deoxy hemoglobin and 99% of oxygen saturated hemoglobin. So this works fine in most of the clinical circumstances. It's a very excellent bedside tool. Excellent bedside tool, no doubt about that. But it has its limitation. But there are other types of hemoglobin also present in your circulation. Then this machine will not work fine because it was relying on the fact that there are majorly two kinds of hemoglobin in the body. One is saturated, one is desaturated. But when is there is third type of hemoglobin, then this then this machine will not provide you uh, correct results. So when meth hemoglobin is there, carboxy hemoglobin is there, then the machine will fail. So you have to do co-oximetry. Co-oximetry is nothing but it measures all kind of hemoglobin. So many of our ABGs, even even in our institute, we have these co-oximeters in the ABG machines. And this gives you fractions of all sorts of hemoglobin. So we did a co-oximetry in this patient, and you will be surprised to see that fraction of meth hemoglobin was 60 percent. It should have been less than one percent in a normal patient. So it was okay. Uh, Sri Tama points out that next we go for hemoglobin electrophoresis. But before that, I would like to ask: Is there a simple bedside test that you can do? Can you just do a simple bedside test to differentiate to diagnose this condition? Yeah. waiting for your answers in the chat box simple bedside test urine what in urine not clear somebody has written methylene blue methylene blue is not used for treatment i asked what is how can you differentiate acid degeneration test color of blood leave blood for some time Okay, it's coming closer. It turns brown. Abhishek says, "Leave blood." Okay, brown. Uh, pulse oximetry that we have already done. Pulse oximetry and uh, but uh, alone pulse oximetry will not give the answer because you need to have simultaneously PO uh, two. Yeah, Doctor Vikram, please. Right. So a very simple bedside test. Many of you have rightly pointed out. So if you keep a uh, Few drops of blood on a filter paper, and you take a control. So, meth on uh, exposure, even on exposure to air, the meth hemoglobin in your blood will remain brown. So that's a very simple bedside test you can do, and you can know that usually it is of chocolatey brown uh, color, depending upon the level of meth hemoglobin. So, if it is somebody is having just 10%, 15%, it may not appear that brown. But if somebody is having 60%, 70%, it may appear just like chocolatey brown. So, that is how you can just make a diagnosis of meth hemoglobin, and then. Co-oximetry is a definitive gold standard where you can confirm the diagnosis. Uh, how to manage students' management of meth hemoglobinemia? So we clear that this child is uh, what we presented was having meth hemoglobinemia. How to manage this particular child? Methylene blue. Abhishek says. other response any other response anything else other than methylene blue yeah okay we go to dr vikram yes rightly pointed out methylene blue is a first line treatment for this condition uh, it was reduction of uh, meth hemoglobin by increasing the activity of nadph meth hemoglobin reductase so that is the first line similarly we can use vitamin c another agent to be given iv and it can also uh, cause reduction of meth hemoglobin If it is a very high quantity, when the uh, methemoglobin levels are very very high, then you can go for exchange transfusion as well. So these are the three modalities. Uh, we kept this case just to uh, sensitize you that sometimes you have to be, uh, depend on your clinical judgment. See, the monitors may go haywire. The clinical setting is not matching with what what monitor is showing. So your SpO2 probe, your monitors, your ECG rhythm. You have to first see your patient. If the patient looks dusky. And saturation probe is showing 90 percent, or if the patient looks more cyanosis, it is not. If your PO2 is rise, then you have to do some other test to confirm your diagnosis. Things should match. 
thing should match. If there is hypoxia, there should be PO2 should also go down. If the saturation is low, that that is that that is how it behaves in a normal life. But if it is saturation is low but PO2 is high, then you have to think of other causes. Thank you, Dr. Vikram. <laughs>